For some reason, you might activate even after you turn it off. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the whole time. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Get started. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
I think I see uh, Sister Kweyemi online. If you don't mind, my sister, if you can give us a new prayer, please. Good evening, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for bringing us again to learn your word tonight. Daddy, we pray that as we listen to the preacher, Father, we pray that will not just be hearers alone, but will also be doers of your word in the name of Jesus. And we pray that the preacher you'll be using for us, pray that, Lord, you minister to him directly from the throne of grace. And at the end of everything, Lord, we have the fullest cause to glorify your name in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen in Jesus' name. Seven hallelujahs. Hallelujah, 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 and welcome everyone. Thank you again for joining us for our Monday Bible study. Uh, we are going to kick off with the book of Acts, uh, chapter 12. We studied chapter 11 last week, and that was Peter coming to Jerusalem. Um, after he recanted, oh, sorry, he recounted, oh, recanted, <laughs> recounted the uh, events of Acts chapter 10, which again in the history of the church marks a, it marks a, a, a prominent, a, 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 a prominent move, right? And what is that move? Is that the Holy Spirit now has been poured out even on the Gentiles as well, right? And Jesus Christ had spoken to them that the gospel will be preached in all the world, right? When he had uh, commissioned the disciples. Um, and now they're seeing the Holy Spirit beginning to move, right? Not only in the, in the, in the Jewish community, right? Uh, the first Christians, of course, were Jews, but they're starting to see the Holy Spirit beginning to move in Samaria, move even uh, in their Roman in their Roman counterparts, and you can see why this would be a big deal then. Because keep in mind that the oppressor of the Jewish people we are who they were the Romans, right? And the Jews, of course, see themselves themselves as God's chosen people, and so as far as they are concerned, God deals with them and them alone. God will not deal with everybody else is an infidel uh, or anybody else is a Gentile. But now we are seeing that the Holy Spirit is not discriminating. There's no discrimination. All barriers are broken. That's why you see the apostle says there's no Jew, there's no Gentile, there's no male, there's no female, no Scythian. There is no one that the Holy Spirit cannot use for the purposes, of course, of spreading the gospel. And this is, of course, in contrast to the Old Testament, what we are very used to, that God calls out a singular person like Moses, uh, Abraham, and then people tend to listen uh, to the prophet and follow the prophet. But now what we are seeing is that the Holy Spirit now is the teacher. The Holy Spirit now is the guide. And that is why even if Peter leaves, when Peter finally finally leaves the home of Cornelius, even though they, they bade him, please stay with us, of course, and he stays with them. But eventually, Peter will have to go. But you see, even when Peter leaves, guess what? The Holy Spirit does not, he does not take the Holy Spirit with him. The Holy Spirit remains with Cornelius and his family. And for anybody else who will come to believe in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts. And so we have become the children of God. As the Bible says, it is our spirit, it is the Holy Spirit with our spirit that verifies that we are what? The children of God. That is the Holy Spirit of God working in us, using us for the purposes of the kingdom of God. And so that is why, again, you see that the Holy Spirit, whether we are in Africa, the Holy Spirit will come and visit us. Whether the Holy Spirit is there, whether in Asia, in ancient China, the Holy Spirit is there, whether in Australia, whether wherever you are in the world, the Holy Spirit has access. There is no barrier in as much as the word of God is present. 
And so we continue as we are studying the early church, um, watching the Holy Spirit in action. Uh, we've, we studied the church in Antioch last week. Again, Antioch being the place where they were first called Christians, right? That's the place that they were first identified as followers of Christ. And the church of Antioch began to grow as, and we'll see that the work of the Lord will continue further. Um, now, today we are studying Acts chapter 12. This is a very, very interesting chapter because we see that there are events that, are ha that happened in the early church are events that are still happening very much today. And one of the, 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 the advantages of studying the book of Acts is that we can always go back to look at the history, how and where, uh, how the church began, what were the events around the time, how were people behaving at the time, what did the church uh, deal with or face at the time, what are some of those things that we can glean from when we are studying the book of Acts and what is relevant, you know, when we see the relevancy between then and now. Um, we can begin from Acts chapter 12 from verse 1. Anyone who's interested in um, helping us read can begin. Now about that time, yes, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. So Herod, now uh, I know Herod is a, is a title or is a, is a title that we are familiar with. The great massacre of the innocents that happened when Jesus Christ was but a, an infant, that he had to be spirited away to Egypt. That Herod is not this Herod, right? That Herod had already passed. That was referred to as Herod the Great. That's that Herod. He had already passed, but that's not this Herod we're talking about. The Bible records about four Herods. I believe. Is it about four or three Herods? I can't remember. Yeah, there's this Herod, exactly. This, this Herod we're talking about is Herod Agrippa. Herod Agrippa the first. He is the one that we are reading uh, uh, about right now. Luke records. He stretches forth as the as, as it's written here, right? He antagonizes the church, right? Oh, we also have Herod the Tetrarch, right? You, uh, Herod, yeah. 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 That's the one that married, uh, I believe, his uh, his sister that, John, that killed John the Baptist, that beheaded John the Baptist. Um, husband to Herodias, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, then this is that, that's that's that Herod in the middle, and then we now have Herod Agrippa, is the one that we are reading about today. Um, now we are seeing immediately here that he he has a sight set on the church, on the body of Christ. Right, this right is leading to one of the. Early persecutions. We do know that Philip uh, Stephen is the first martyr, but now one of the first persecutions that the church will have to deal with is carried out by Herod uh, Agrippa, right? So he stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And what does he do in verse two? And he killed James, and the he, brother of John. James, with the sword. remember James Zebedee. Hmm. He kills James. Now, you can imagine that even out of the 12 disciples, even there's an inner three, that is Peter, that is John, and that is James, that Jesus will often take, you know, even with him on certain missions that the other, other nine were not a part of. And so you can imagine that he is a very big um, icon within the church. But now his ministry has been cut short. One of the early ones to be killed. And if James is killed by Herod, what do you think the impact would be in the church at that time? Everyone, it, 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 I mean, Peter, will hear, I can't believe it. James is dead. You know, it's, it's like a shock when it hits us, you know, when maybe a member of the, of the church dies, right? Maybe a prominent member of the church, someone that we know very well. And it's like, we know that death is imminent, but when it happens to certain types of people, it takes us, it's like we're in a grip of shock, right? It's like, we cannot believe it. I remember when Kobe died many years ago. It was on a Sunday, I, I will never forget. 
It was on a Sunday. We were, I think, around Thanksgiving time. And then, like, you know how our iPhones always has, like, all of these Apple news and stuff. And it just says, you know, Kobe and daughter Gigi died. Helicopter. I look, I was, I remember I was about to start playing Thanksgiving and I just <laughs> glanced over and I just saw that. I didn't believe it, but, you know, the work of God has to continue. And I told my uncle was playing bass at the time, you know, where I said, you know, Kobe just died. He thought I was joking. He said, run you, it cannot be. But the point I'm trying to extract there is that so, even as we know death is imminent, there's a shock that it has on us, especially when certain people. And so you can imagine James, that the brother of, of John, again, another prominent member of the, of the disciples, of the discipleship, the brother of John, you can imagine that the, 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 um, the impact that it will have on the body of Christ at that time. This became very real to them. And so Herod is hunting them, persecuting them. And so you find, you know, according to the history of the church, many begin to scatter and go to different places. But not only does he kill James, what else does he do? And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Mm -hmm. Then were the days of unleavened, the unleavened bread. bread, right? Again, the reason I'm, 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 I'm trying to drive this home is because I want us to be able to relate to what we are reading. Oftentimes when we read scripture, I think we read it so quickly. We don't absorb the impact there. And sometimes we need the historical context to help us absorb it, um, to have an understanding. These people were people like us, flesh and blood. They cried like we cried. They felt sorrow like we felt, like we feel sorrow. They went through bouts of pain like we went through pain. Probably, of course, even more than we do. But this is the persecution of the church, one of the earliest persecution, persecutions of the church. And Herod, he notices something that what he has done to James, he pleased the Jews, right? Now this is a political move. People are excited that, oh, you got James good. Because if he manages to kill James, and he manages not even the other nine, but let's even say the three. If he manages to kill Peter, if he manages to kill James, if he manages to kill John, what do you think is going to happen to the body of, body of Christ? It will become very flimsy. When you strike the inner core, you know, it, the, 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 the church can begin to shake. I, I, I wasn't present, of course. I, was, I, I don't think I was even born, but it was the same year when the pastor founder of this church passed away and when he died. I, can, I, I, I wasn't there, but I believe that it was a shock to many. It must have been a shock to many people that they did not believe that he would just die like that. And of course, in a and, and even in a car accident. But even the impact of his death from then, even now, are we still not feeling it? We are feeling it. Right, it is you know the, the the prominency of some of these characters, and so Herod notices that wow, this is a big fish, and because it pleased the Jews, it decided okay, let me follow up. Now I've gotten James, let me now follow up and go even for the bigger fish. Yes, and what does he do? And when he had apprehended him, yeah, he apprehends Peter. Yes. He put him in prison. He puts Peter in prison, yes. And delivered him to four quaternions. He puts him in soldiers to keep him. Four what? Quaternions. So when you, even if we don't understand quaternion means we can at least summarize that it has to do with what? Four. With four. All right. So there are like four sections, right? Four sections of security. Four sections of security. Why? Because he doesn't want anything to interrupt the plan that he has for Peter. And what is the plan? To put Peter yeah. to death, to kill him. And because he knows once he gets rid of Peter, right, he would definitely gain the favor of the people even more. It's a political game. That's often what we do. It's what politicians do. Always trying to secure the favor of the people. And so he guards Peter 
very, very well. He knows exactly what this means for the movement. He knows what this means for his own political career. He guards Peter with four, deep, uh, four uh, uh, sections of security. Yes? Intending after Easter mm -hmm. to bring him forth to the people. Yes. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, mm -hmm. but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. What was the church doing? They were praying. They were in prayer. Yeah. Can we learn something from this today? Absolutely. Right? Peter is in prison. Like that, that might be symbolic of our pastor. Let's say our pastor is in prison. And all of us who break out into fast and prayer, we are praying. But I, I love this chapter because it, I, I love the way Luke records everything here. Because it shows aspects of, of us as human beings. That even when we are conducting the proper right or doing things properly, yet the question, there's yet our faith. Right? There's still a question mark. Right? And you understand what I mean? The, more, the further the further we read, there's still a question mark of our faith. Now, they are praying for Peter. That's a faithful, a faithful practice. Right? He has been apprehended. No doubt they are praying that the Lord will intervene and pray for his soul. Um, so what happens? And when Herod would have brought him forth, Yes. The same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, yes. bound with two chains. So again, they bound Peter with chains, even as he's heavily under guard, right? They bound Peter in chains, and Peter is asleep in chains, yes? And the keepers before the door kept the prison. They kept the prison. And behold, mm -hmm. the angel of the Lord came upon him. Yes. And a light shined in the prison. Yes. And he smote Peter on the side. Yes. And raised him up, saying, mm -hmm. Arise right. up quickly. Mm -hmm. And his chain fell off from his hand. And you see, right, the intervention of God. Jesus Christ sends an angel to, re to, to uh, release Peter from prison. A light came, right? Shone, entered into the prison, woke uh, Peter up, arise, it's time to go. And Peter could very well have died at this point. But you see, now is not yet the time for him to die. Why? Because no doubt he, he still has work to do. He has a mission. So the Lord will not allow it to happen. The persecution of the church, right, is happening. And Peter, once you take Peter, the impact will be felt. So it cannot happen, not right now, at least not as the church is, is beginning to, to grow its legs. It's still very much in its infancy, but it is beginning to mature into at least adolescence. adolescence. So the angel wakes him up, under heavy guard in chains, touches him, the chains fall off from his hands, and then the angel says to him in verse 8, and the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, ready yourself, and find on thy sandals. Put on your sandals, As yes. he did. Uh -huh. And he said unto him, said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, yes. and follow me. Put on your garment and follow me, yes. And he went out mm -hmm. and followed him, mm -hmm. and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, yes. but thought he yes. was a vision. So the whole time this he event was vision. happening, he thought that this was a vision. Right, he could not reconcile that this was actually real. What was happening? He thought that this was a vision, but this was certainly real. The Lord Almighty was breaking him away from prison, from captivity. Right? Yes. Let's read on. When they were past the first and the second ward, yes, they came onto the iron gates mm -hmm. that led it onto the city. And you wonder, okay, but all this. Um, soldiers that have him under guard, what is it they are doing? Now, if the, the angel probably put them all to sleep, mm -hmm. right? Sleep. Put them all to sleep and they're just passing through like nothing. Again, this is the power of God demonstrated in the early church. Especially for Peter because, again, he has a lot of work to do. But even as a soldier of Christ, let me let me digress a little bit. It isn't everybody that's locked up that will have this, um, that will have this, I guess we can call it grace. 
that the angel of the Lord will break them out of prison. Many persecutions happened, you know, in the early church under even different, many Roman emperors, different Roman emperors, and many died. No angel came to break them from prison. One of those is uh, the saints, if you, you can read about her, Perpetua. Perpetua, who was of noble birth, received the gospel, and um, was asked to renounce her faith by her father. At that point, at that time also, she had actually just given birth to a child. And so the father pleaded with Perpetua, his, his daughter, to please renounce your faith. Come home. She refused. And she also, she prayed to God. What should she do? In her prayer, God revealed to her what was going to happen. I think she saw fire and a couple things. So she knew through that dream how she was going to die. But the father persisted, even brought her child to her in the prison where she was and said, look, what mother will abandon her child in this world? All you need to do is renounce your faith in Jesus Christ. Say Caesar is your Lord. Say, say the emperor is your Lord. That you will no longer uh, bow down to Christ for the sake of your child. What do you think Perpetua did? A hard decision. But yet she was steadfast in her faith. Perpetua was, was martyred. She was killed. Now, if you contrast that with today, how many, and I have faith here with a question mark because it begs the question for many of us. Because I have a sneaking suspicion that even the church as it stands today, when push comes to shove, but when we get down to brass tacks, our faith is very questionable. For many of us, God is probably not primary. It's easy to say when you ask if you can ask a congregation, who is the most important to you? Oh, Jesus is. Everybody will say that. But when push comes to shove, and it will be, we will be tested. That's the thing. We are going to be tested. Because what is faith when it's not tested? Without it being tested, we will be tested. This morning, as some of us might know, we woke up to news to uh, the bishop, right? The Assyrian, the bishop of the Assyrian Orthodox Church. That's uh, uh, Mari Emmanuel, right? Uh, and he was stabbed by a teenager. No doubt because of the words that he, he has been speaking, the sermons he has been preaching, standing on the truth. But if you listen to some of his old sermon, uh, I think most previous sermons, where he said somebody had sent him a note saying that in two weeks, he has two weeks to pack up, he's going to die. And you can listen to it and listen to the way he, he responds to that. That is how you measure faith. Because it has, it's very identical to what we see in the early church. The, the men and women of the early church were not the people that feared death. They did not, they were not afraid of death. Peter says something, is it um, is this second Peter, where he says that even the Lord has revealed to him how he's going to die. If someone can find that for me, I believe it's second Peter, right? Mm -hmm. da -da -da. It says, uh, if anyone finds it, please feel free to to interject and we'll read it out loud because I don't think as many, and you'll find that in many churches because most congregational members are not encouraged to read their Bibles. They don't know that these things exist there. So they are systematically uh, 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 driven away from these types of verses in scripture. And we are focused on the prosperity scriptures, which that's not what they are. They are usually taken out of context. But so that it can fit the agenda of prosperity, we, we find that many shepherds and pastors and clergymen don't even attend to these verses. Um, I really want us to read that. If someone can find that, where Peter says, talks about how the Lord has shown him 
if uh, of his own of his death. Second Peter one fourteen. Is it Second Peter one? Second Peter one. Yes, that's it. No we can start. From, we can start from twelve. Wherefore, yes, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Yes, do ye know them mm -hmm. and be established, established in, in the, the present, present truth? truth. Uh huh. Yeah, I think it me. I think it meets. I think it right. Yes, as long as I am in this tabernacle. As long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in. To stir you up, right? To to stir you up in remembrance. Yes. Knowing that shortly I must put up this tabernacle. Look, see, look, it says, knowing that shortly I must do what? I must put off this tabernacle. What's he talking about that? Uh, uh, there? Death. It's talking about his death. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown him. As the Lord has done what? Has shown him. I want us to really think about that because many of us, if we see visions or dreams of our death, of our passing, immediately, who do we ascribe that to? We ascribe it to the devil. We we'll wake up. We we'll start in sweat. Pray, ah, I pray, I rebuke it. Oh my, it, it must be some generational curse over my. They is they they done their covenant with water. They've done covenant. We we'll start coming up with things we have no clue about because we are so afraid to die. We are afraid of death. And you, as a believer, you say you have faith. You know what? If you're by that faith. You know, by, by reason of that faith, you should know what awaits you. But you're so, we are so afraid. We are so afraid. I rebuke it. You'll find even revivals, all of these gymnastics and exercises. I will not die. I, the word says I will not die, but I will live. <laughs> That's, it's like you don't understand what, what, that, what that verse means. The early church were not afraid of death. In fact, I'll give you another example. This is Paul in the book of Philippians. I believe it's Philippians chapter, is it chapter 4? Where it says to the Philippians that he is ready to, he is ready to die. Uh, let's see. Is it Philippians 4? Is it Philippians or Philippians 3? Where it says, I am ready, I'm ready to die. And if I if if I die, I count it as uh mm, yeah. this one we're in Bible study. We'll figure it out. Let's keep let's keep looking. This is uh I know it's in Philippians for sure. Is it three? Four, two, three, or four, one of those. For me to die, you said. Yeah, that is. Three. For me to die is gain. That's it. I, I, did you find it? Is it? Okay, if anyone finds it, and if you find it also in the chat, please feel free to. Uh, oh, is it Philippians 1? Ah, okay. Philippians 1, 21. Yeah, there we go. We can read it. Uh, Philippians 1. Actually, let's start from 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope. Yes. That in nothing I shall be ashamed. It says in nothing I shall I shall be ashamed. Yes. But that with all boldness, boldness uh -huh. as always, as always. So now also Christ, Christ shall be magnified, magnified in, in my body. body. Yes. Whether it be by life, by or life. Death. Can you? See, I want us to understand. This is the way they thought. This is not even just thinking. This is how they lived. Right. This is how they lived. Take a moment to understand that. Do we live that way? Do we do we we are it's as a church as a body of Christ? I'm not just talking celestial now. I'm talking about all of Christendom. Do we live that way? That Christ is magnified in our life and in our death. That when the Master says to you and I, today I want you. Today your life. No fear, but boldness. Are we bold? 
I talked about Perpetua. She had a child that, that, would, probably, that would not grow up to, to see her. And yet, for the sake of the gospel, she gave her life. Yes, let's read on. The Philippians. But I live in the flesh. Uh -huh. This is the fruit of my labor. Yes. Yet what I shall choose, I would not. Uh, let's go, uh, this is Philippians 21. For me to live is Christ. Yeah, for me to live is Christ. Yes. And to die, die is, is gain. Uh -huh, 22. But if I live in the flesh. But if I live in the flesh. This is the fruit of my labor. This is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I uh -huh. would not. Uh, yes. For I, I am in a straight between two. It says I, I am in a bind between two. Two big, two big, two big uh, 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 choices or two big, uh, it's like in a, in a, in a, in dire straits here. Yes. Uh huh. Having a desire to depart. I have a desire to depart. Let's even hold it there for a second. How many of us have a desire to depart? Can you see that even us just talking about it, it's, it might be, it's probably uncomfortable for some of us and ask yourself, why is it uncomfortable? It shouldn't be. It is uncomfortable because it's not what we preach anymore. Within the community of Christians, we should be able to have this conversation without it being uncomfortable. In fact, all of us should be ready at any time. But we have lost the boldness. And that only happens. How does that happen? It happens when we become more worldly. That's what, that, that's, that's what tends to happen. When worldliness becomes our focus, then we start having the fear. We lack the boldness. Death becomes a terror to us. And then we cannot say, oh, death, where is thy, is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? It's not something you just recite. You have to be bold to, to say it, to claim it, to know it. The believer already ought to be ex to be experiencing the next the next world even now. But many of us, the only world we're experiencing is this one, and that is why we cling to it so tightly. It's like a child that, that does not want to leave the, the, the mother and just continues to cling. We, that's how we cling to this life so much. Because the church has become more worldly than divine. That's the problem. We are steeped in worldliness. And so that, that bishop, if you listen to the way he spoke, it almost seems like he's a rebel. But he's not saying anything Paul has not said or Peter has not said. The only, way, the only reason it sounds very radical to us is because somewhere along the road, the church stopped preaching like that. That's what happened. And so we that are in the church if it doesn't, if we're not talking about blessings, 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 mm. blessings galore, it, anything else sounds strange. And what did that pastor talk about today? Uh, he said uh, we can be ready for death. What kind of church is that? I come to my own church. We're always talking about all the good things that can happen. But because we are forgotten, we are afraid. The believer has defeated death because of Christ. But we have forgotten that. We are really afraid. And it's probably, maybe, again, that's why I have faith with a question mark. It's probably because your faith is not there. It's really not there. You're playing a role. You're acting. But you're not really believed. Right? And so what does Paul say again? Let's read a bit more. Nevertheless, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for more you. More needful, yes. And having this, this confidence, confidence uh -huh. I know that I shall abide and continue with you yes. all for your further, further rank yes. and joy of faith. We can stop there. Thank you very much. The only reason he's even contemplating life is not even for his own benefit. Mm -hmm. It's for the ben is for the movement of the church because he knows the church is still young and probably will still benefit from his guidance. And he said it also in Acts of Apostles chapter 20. Chapter, oh, chapter 20, yes. What else does this say? Can we read how that? I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. Verse yes, 20. verse 20. But have showed you and have taught you publicly, publicly. and from house to house. Yes. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Yes. Yes. Repentance towards God yes. and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and now behold, 
-hmm. I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem. I go bound unto Jerusalem. Not knowing the things that shall befall me. Not yet. knowing what is going to come, but what does he say? Save, uh -huh. save that the Holy Ghost witness in every city. The Holy and every city that Paul was going to. I love that. I can't wait till we get to chapter 20. I love that chapter. It says, for every city that he goes to. What is the Holy Spirit saying? Saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Bonds and afflictions await me in every city I go. But none of these things move me. I love that. We can stop there. We're still going to get to, to I love that chapter. It says, but none of this do what? It moves me. I always, anytime I read that, it, it brings me to tears. Because when you contrast that by what we see today, a prophet, you go to you go to uh Santon Parish, a prophet says, you know, death awaits you this week. You go to Comforter Parish, they tell you the same thing. They go, I bet you that person will run all the way to Nigeria and ask for grace and do if they tell that person to bring roosters and bring and all these, uh, bring kangaroo and bring anything that will stop death, they will do it. And these are believers. Paul and Silas were apprehended in prison. They, they sang, they prayed, the earthquake came, and what happened? They were, they were free from prison. Now, what is the natural instinct? The moment we are free, what should we do? We'll take off and what? And run. I mean, I mean, this is what we've been praying. We are praying. God has answered our prayers. and we. But what did Paul do? Did he run? Mm -mm. He stayed. He stayed. I want us to really sit with these things to understand. Do, are, we, do, are you sure that you belong in the same category as these people? Are we in the same class? Or are we just, are we just, is it just bravado? Is it just when we're just talking? Are we just acting like we believe? Because there's one thing we humans do very well is pretend. We lie to ourselves a lot. And we lie to ourselves very effectively. And as the Bible says, as a man thinks, so he is. Once you, once you get yourself thinking in untruth, you will act that way. But this life that we are so thirsty for, this life we are, we, are, we cling to, it's not built for, for, for eternity. It's not built for eternity. If I, if, I, if I got a piece of apple from a tree, I plucked it out right now, put it on this table, and come back in about a month, will that apple retain the same freshness? What happens to it? It begins to work. Okay. It begins to decay. No one has touched it. Nothing happened to it. I just put it on the table. I plucked it and put it there on the table. Come back in four weeks. It already looks like it looks because this atmosphere, this life we are we are so that's the way it that's what that's the sin that's been injected in it. Mm -hmm. It it goes toward it regresses, it goes into decay. This is decayed life. It's not everlasting life. We have not know what it is like yet to have a life that's moving towards the best. We have life going in regression. And just like that apple, you and I are the same. The older we are getting, what's happening? We're like with all the cells, after a while, they won't, they won't replicate as they used to. And then cancer cells and then kidneys and liver and all of these things. And we begin to regress. In this life, does not matter if you, even if from the day they gave birth to you, and not, you've never been outside and you stayed in your house and you put yourself in a bubble. This life goes towards degradation and decay. But in the next life, now we are moving towards the best, everlasting. Not towards decay anymore. But this is the life we want to, we want to, we want to cling on to so much, so badly. So badly. It's a life moving towards decay. And no one is exempt. Does not matter all the pounds of makeup you put on. Does not matter all the age-defying cosmetics you use. Does not matter if you have the best plastic surgeon. They are all, nobody can stop the time. This life, as the way it, it is, is leading towards decay. And that is why Jesus has come. That's why when he rose from the dead, never to die again, 
His body, everything now is, 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 is within the eternal life realm, the everlasting life. So that's why it says, I am the way, the truth. I am life. I have come that you might have life and life in abundance. Not life that's moving towards decay, but life that's moving towards the, the most abundance of life, and that's God. We don't know what that's like, but Christ has demonstrated it. And that's what, we, that's what awaits us. But we are so scared, we are so afraid. So Peter, of course, is being set free here in the book of Acts. No doubt it's because of the work God still needs him to do. Because the church is still in its infancy. And what and the damage it will do to the church if Peter were taken at this time. But Peter will still pass. We just read it in that um second Peter in his letter, right? Uh second Peter chapter one, I believe. We just read it. As the Lord had shown him. Christ even had told him again when we read John chapter 21, how he will die, how he will be bounded. As a believer, and I say this, as a believer, death should not, should not terrify us. Death is not something that should, should terrify us as believers. But we are not, we are no longer taught that way. It's not preached that way, and so it does. Again, I am not saying that death should not grieve us. It, we must grieve. It's something that is grievous. It's grievous. Peter, uh, John, uh, Jesus got to the uh, tomb of Lazarus, and the Bible says Jesus did what? He wept for a person that in just a couple of minutes he's going to raise back to life. Why is he crying? He's demonstrating to us that it's okay. What this means. This death, it's a separation. It's a, it's, a, it's a corruption of life. But that does not mean we should fear it. As believers, we are not afraid. The atheists can, can be afraid because as, long, as far as they are concerned, there is no life after death. But we know. That's why we do not mourn as unbelievers do. We don't grieve as they do. We know that those who die in Christ will surely resurrect. I want to ku for all Christi. I want to do a bele bure. Won yo ji kelu ogun la. A o won won la sho ogun. That's why a celestial church of Christ. What we are, it, it's what we demonstrate all the time. This sutana we are wearing is of the is of, is of the coming world. That's what we are acting out in this world. The reality of the next world. But now we are so we are, we are in Sutana, you are scared, you are afraid. Then what are you what do you have it on for? Why are you put it? It means you don't understand the significance. You are an embodiment of life everlasting, not decayed life, not life in in in, in de, uh, that's that's moving towards decay. But life towards eternity, life towards ab 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 abundance, right? So God delivers Peter, um, and then what happens? When they were past the first and the second one, yes, they came onto the iron gate, yes, that leadeth onto the city, mm -hmm. which opened to them, which opened to them of his own accord. So they got to the gate, and the gate opened itself. Right, without even touching out, it. Yes. And when they went out, yeah, and passed on through one street mm -hmm. and fought with and fought with the angel departed from him. Now, when Peter was free, right? Well, after he had passed the gate, the angel has completed its mission, right? And then Peter, what happens? And when Peter was come to himself, mm -hmm. he said, Now I know of a surety he says, yes. that the Lord has sent his angel and had delivered me out of the Because initially of he had thought he was yeah. dreaming. He thought this was all a vision. But now he knows that this is actually real. This is reality. He has been set free uh, by the angel of the Lord from prison. Yes? 
and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod, yes. and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Yes. And when he had considered the thing, mm -hmm. he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, mm -hmm. whose son was Mark. Mark, yes. Where many were gathered together mm -hmm. praying. So Peter goes to the house of, of Mary, the mother of Mark, right? And John Mark is somebody that we know of. I believe he's the one ascribed the, that wrote the Gospel of Mark, but you also see him when uh, Paul and Barnabas have a have a they have a fight, like a very very uh, huge fight amongst themselves. The the fight is over this character of John Mark, right? Whether to take him or not to take him, right? Um, so is a is a prominent member uh, of the church. This Mark. So Peter goes to his house where they are all praying together, right? They are praying. Uh huh. And as Peter knocked at the door Peter of the knocked. gate, uh -huh. a damsel came to Hakon, yes. named Rhoda. Yeah, Rhoda comes to the door to and, answer, yes. And when she saw Peter, Peter's voice, when she, when when she, she knew, knew Peter's her. voice, when she knew Peter's voice, she yes. opened not the gate for gladness. Now, uh, notice that it doesn't say when she saw Peter. Why do you think that is? Because back again, this is not it's not a true question, but back then you, you have to understand lights did not have lights like this, right? Mm -hmm. It's it, at night, it's all dark, mm -hmm. right? So when in, you can't just oh that's you, it's not like today, someone knocking your door. We have lights everywhere, thanks to Edison and Tesla. You know, you can see back then it's you know, lamp. yeah, lamp yeah. and and, and so, some and you don't want to waste it too because you needed the mm -hmm. uh, Para, oh, yeah. uh, oil and stuff so it's only for at, at night you have to conserve mm -hmm. so they heard the knock that's why she, she could tell that it was peter through her oh. hearing mm -hmm. that's why you often find that hearing listening hearing was a very very prominent uh uh uh, uh um what they call it sense in those days right um because especially at night right you 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 know how to decode even now you can still decode people's voices mm -hmm. but even more so then right hearing was something that people it was a very acute sense that's what i was trying to say very acute sense even more acute than than nowadays especially look at our children it's all visuals all we is seeing 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 and seeing right but back then hearing was a very very acute sense right um, people could hear. It's why they could even memorize better than we do. They would hear and they could retain as they were hearing. They could regurgitate things. That's why even the early the the scriptures that we read for a, for a long period of time it wasn't written down. It was what oral tradition. It was oral tradition passed down. As they would hear it, they would also do what they would recount it. Right. You will find that also they still that tradition exists even in, in, in the Islamic faith, right? They would recite and recite and recite, right? And they would hear it. And what would they do? They would regurgitate it. I believe that um, it was during the time of one of the um, Muhammad's caliphs. What was his name? Was it Uthman? I can't remember. Because they had not even codified the Quran at that time. But he was, he, he now decided, ah, no, we have to write this down because people started coming up with their own version. So he sought out the ones that really were always with the, with uh, Muhammad all the time. And all of them, we are reciting it word for word as they heard it. And that allowed them to be able to, to codify it. The point I'm trying to make is that it was a very, very acute sense, right? Even the Bible says faith comment by what? Yeah. By hearing. Hearing what? The word, the word of God. God. Some of us, are here, our ability to hear and retain is, is very poor, right? And it's something we should work on. It's something that we should we should we should work on. But I digress. She hears Peter's voice and she knew that that's Peter. She knew that this has to be Peter's voice. But notice what does she do? Rather than oh Peter, it's you. What what happens? Yes. He ran, but ran in uh -huh. and told how Peter stood before the gate. He ran and told them that Peter is at the gate. And what did they say? And now they said unto her, uh -huh. "Thou art mad." <laughs> what did they say? She's what? She's mad. Now this is why I had faith with question mark. These people are praying, mm -hmm. right? We are praying. No doubt they are praying that Lord, if you see, if you deem it fit, please. Release Peter from prison. Set him free. Okay, God has done it now. Peter is at the gate. And what is their initial reaction to this miracle? Now, no, you, you, you must be mad. There is no way. It's impossible. 
And then you ask yourself, well, if it's impossible, why were you praying to begin with? But I, I, I highlight that because it, it, in us as human beings, right? Because sometimes we might say that we pray for certain things. And even we pray, even with an iota of disbelief or unbelief, I think is the better way, unbelief in us. It's not a strange thing. Because there are many times you are praying that, Lord, please open this door for me. Open. But secretly in your mind somewhere, you to, <laughs> can it really, really happen? Can it happen? And that just seems as if you are just praying because that's just the thing to do. Not because you believe that it will happen. That's why Jesus says that any whatever you ask in my name, believe me. Right? Remember, he says that. If anyone can find that verse, he says, whatever you ask in my name, believe me. Faith is the substance of things what? Not no, not the, the substance of things hoped for. for. It is the evidence of things not seen. If you understand that as faith, you it, it makes it easy for you to really classify yourself. Do you really fall in that? It is the substance of things hoped for. That's number one. You're hoping. But it is the evidence of things, right, not seen. Someone who operates like that is a bold spirit. That's a bold person. David gets to the camp, right? When he, his father had sent him to, uh, with, with, uh, with uh, what do you call it, food and stuff to go to his brothers who were soldiers in, in Saul's camp. He gets to the camp. He sees everybody in camp and he's hearing this noise in the field. And, he, uh, who, and then he goes to them and says, oh, who is this? What's this guy talking? What are you guys doing? This is a teenager. I want you to understand. This is a teenager. He hears this giant bellowing and, and he, all he's doing is just going to go give food to his brother. The brothers at the encampment. And then he says, ah, no, 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 no. I, I'm not going back home today. This problem must be sorted out today. I'm, even his brothers were telling, telling him, look, you, you, you completed your mission. Be going home. This is not a place for kids. But if he, he read it. That's why, that's why we have these parables, these stories. He, they, they decide to make a, a fuss that he's ready to go out and fight. It got to the ears of Saul. Saul said, okay, bring him. Even Saul, the king, that's tall. All the soldiers were there. None of them could do anything. They were afraid. Had Goliath been taken out of the picture, they probably would have no problem with the Philistines. But that Goliath represented the face of death, of, of certain death to them. Anyone who's, who stood against Goliath, it was almost certain they would die. And they were afraid. But you see, David already, it, 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 the evidence of things not seen, goes to Saul and says, look, I will go out and face this giant. What's this Saul tells him? Saul says, hey, you, this guy has been a soldier all his life. You've not even entered the battlefield. Saul even puts on him armor. It's like, ah, he could barely move in it. And you can imagine Saul just laughing. <laughs> you cannot even move in this armor. Look at that one. Like he's probably juggling armor like it's nothing. And you want to go face him. David said, look, I don't need all of these things. Because even when he was a shepherd, he has been seeing the hand of God. His faith has been developing. He would fight bears. He would fight lions. All he took was a stone, five stones, I believe, and a slingshot. That's all he took. To many of us, that's a suicide mission. That's a suicide mission. But notice that it is not recorded that David prayed before he went there. When he went there, he went there in faith. He says, look, he told the giant. He said, even told him how the giant is going. He, he told Goliath how he's going to die. That I will take your head. The God of Israel has already given me. Can you imagine someone that talks that way? He says, the God of Israel has already given you into my hands. You're, you're already you're a walking corpse. You're dead already. This is just rewind. What we are doing that's already happened. And just as he said, it almost seemed like he was a prophet. As he predicted, God gave Goliath into his hands. That's it. Faith is the substance of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things not seen. And many of us claim we have faith. But it's something that we ought to check. 
something that we really ought to check. Do we have faith? Where is your faith? Is a question Jesus often would ask his disciples. Where is your faith? Where is it? And many of us, we it's it, 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 now look at what happened to to Bishop uh, Mari Emmanuel today. Look at what happened to him. Out of nowhere, he's what's about he's about to preach what he always does. A defenseless old man. I mean, he's not defenseless spiritually. About to preach, and he's attacked that way. But if you look at many of our, 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 our pastors nowadays, oh, they have like 20 bodyguards all surrounding him. We are, they are afraid. Mm -hmm. Nighttime calls, we're all closing our doors. You know, <laughs> you know, and don't get me wrong. Look, even in the early church, they hid to do worship. They, were, they had to hide in catacombs and things like that. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Because at the end of the day, it's not like we are putting ourselves out there that, oh, we want to be killed. Mm -hmm. But when the time to die came, that was it. I was not, I remember I uh, reading Justin Martyr. He was they, they would hide him here and there, but was the old man is after a while said, Look, I'm not hiding anymore. Come and get me. It's time. When it is time, it is time. When it's not your time, just like Peter, the Lord will not. It's uh, the, the bishop that got stabbed. Thank, we thank God he's in stable condition. Apparently, what they said was the knife that was supposed to. Uh, to be on sheath to stab him, they naturally come out of the the the, the sheath itself, and so it was blunt stabbing. Mm -hmm. All glory be to God. It means that God still has work for him to do. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God still has work because even just that initial stab, I think, was on the face. So at that at that at that uh, dagger being on sheath, at a man his own his age, only God knows he would just bleed to death. But God still has work for him to do. You can't be a Christian if, if you are not ready to be bold. It's something you are. Christ himself says, look, just as any king is about to go to war, what does he do? He counts the cost. Can we go to war? Do we have the resources? Do we have the men? Yeah. Right? These are the things that a king has to consider before going to war. Same also, so also we that are of the faith. Count the you must count the cost if you know that your wife means more to you, your husband means more to you, your children means more, they mean more to you. It's best you focus on and, and do that religion. Be the be the do do the religion of husband of husbandship or wifery or parental religion. Because Christ has made it clear: if they come first before me, you are not worthy of me. Beware of anybody that's trying to make you feel guilty for putting God first. God must be number one. Anyone who cannot handle that, we must pray for. We must pray for. Because at the end, death will do marriage apart. Death will do... When, when it, parents will be separated from their children, death, it will come. But we are going to face... Atewe, atiagba. Even your seven-year-old child will stand before God. There is not a Lord is just seven. Lord is not talking to you. He knows. He knows who He made. This is real. This is serious. This is the reality of faith. What we believe, and we must count the cost. Okay, let's speed up a bit because of time. 15. 15. She constantly affirmed that it was even so. She told them, it's Peter, I, I, and that's his voice. I know his voice, yes? Then said they, uh -huh. it is his angel. It is. Mm -hmm. Look at that, they are rational. Like, it cannot be Peter, it's his angel. Notice, notice how they are quick to leap from at reality, and then they are, they are quick to embrace the, the divine. It must be his angel. Okay, but why can't God break him out of prison? Right? I mean, good guesses, but still, it goes to show that, again, faith is something, it's an, we are, we, it's an exercise. And look, we are not putting down, you might not have it in your mind right now that you are ready to die for the faith. Don't quit. I won't say you should quit, you know, continue to pray. That's the faith. That's what you should aim for. Because it can come at any time. But let our death and our, magnify the name of Christ. 
Let our life magnify the name of Christ. All right. So mm -hmm. then Peter continued knocking. They continued knocking. And yes. when they had opened the door yeah. and saw him, yeah. they were astonished. Now they saw him and they were astonished. But yes. He mm -hmm. beckoning unto them mm -hmm. with the hand to hold their peace, yeah. declared unto them how the Lord had brought What's him the out of the prison. Testimony, yes. And he said, Go show these things unto James mm -hmm. and to the brethren. Mm -hmm. And he departed. Now and went into another the place. James that they are saying there of course it can't be the one that was killed this is James the brother of Jesus this is the James that writes the epistle at least as far as we know that wrote the epistle of James that we read right that's that James yes I think he is referred to as the bishop of, of Jerusalem at the time right people people really liked James even I think there's a sect called the sect of the Ebionites which we talked about they really they 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 are the ones that still want to practice Christianity, but still holding to the Jewish faith type of, of people. Uh, but let's read for, read on. We'll talk about that another time. Now, as soon as it was day, yeah. there was no small stare among the soldiers. Mm -hmm. What was become of, of Peter? Peter? So all the soldiers that were guarding Peter, began, what happened? How did he escape? All of us, right? How did he get from one... one, uh, one uh, the post to how did he get through all of our posts, right? Uh huh. And when Herod had sought for him, when verse 19, for those who are following, yes, and found him not, mm -hmm. he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. Yeah, and he went down from Judea to Caesarea Area, and yes. there abode. Yes, and Herod was highly displeased when with them mm -hmm. of Tyre and Sidon. Yes. That they came with one accord to him and having made Blastos the king's chamberlain, their mm -hmm. friend desired peace. Yes. Because their country was nourished by the king's country. So this is like foreign affairs. Tyre and Sidon depended on, on uh, Judea for certain uh, I guess uh, economic dependency that they had on, on Herod's uh, uh, you know, domain of, of rule. So we are, we are we, here. We are made to understand that there are some uh, mis, uh, some things going on between Herod, uh, Tyre, and 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 Sidon. Yes, twenty one. And upon the third day, mm -hmm. Herod, mm -hmm. arrayed in royal apparel, yes, sat upon his throne and made an oration mm -hmm. unto onto them. Oration is like he gave a bull a speech, right? Back in those days, you know, oration was a big thing. You know, we have many people that we know that were great uh, uh, orators. orators. Cicero is one of those that we know. Uh, people like um, what's his name? Seneca. We have, like, we have, you know, a lot of intelligent people, bold people that, you know, make bold sp uh, speeches. To give an oration is something that inspires, you know, that moves people. Yeah, you know, one of the famous clips you see of Hitler when he's speaking to the German people, riling them up, you know, like the oration, you know, that's that's an oration. Him speaking boldly and, empower, you know, empowering them, inspiring them, moving them. So you see what we are seeing here is a picture of uh, of of of, you know, you know, Herod in, in, in royal robes, you know, as a king on his throne, inspiring the people, drawing attention to himself. Right. You you get this 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 picture that you know of, of Herod in this manner, and the people, of course, listening to him. And then after he has spoken, given such a powerful speech and oration, the effect it has on the people. Verse twenty two, and the people gave a shout. Give hey, a shout. Yes, it sees the voice of a god. It says, ah, look at what he's saying. This, not is, of a man. It's, this is not a man. This is the voice of a god. Right? You can hear because. Again, we we still have that very we still have that today. You know, Obama was a very good orator too as well when he was a, a, a president. Clinton. Yeah, you know, I mean, even Trump is a good orator to his base. You know, you hear, you know, you hear you, whenever he speaks, they are usually very riled up and things like that. You know, that people are 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 in awe. You know, when someone speaks with such such flair like that, and it was so moving. That the people are like, ah, no, 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 yeah, this is not the voice of a man that is saying all of this. What we are hearing, this is this is godlike speech that we are we are hearing. And then what happens? 
And, and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him. Immediately, yes. Because he gave not God, God the, the glory. glory. Uh -huh. And he was eaten, eaten of worms yes. and gave up the ghost. I want us to see that picture because it is a parable. You know, like I said, like whenever we read this, understand that all these things too are parables. They are events, but they are also parables. Why? Because they teach us something. They teach us something deep here, right? You see the 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 picture of of arrogance of 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 you know pride here, right? Where people begin to even elevate you to the position of God of godhood, right? But to show again that there's only one God, right? God demonstrates his power here, even at the peak of his of his of his uh uh at the peak of his uh, of his career as a king in front of all of these people. What does God do? God cuts him down to size. And this is something we must constantly remind ourselves about or of. Sometimes we might think that we are too big. We might think that, but the Bible is clear. God resists the proud. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. The Bible says because he did not do what, Herod did not do what? He did not give glory to God. Many of us will overlook this and think, but okay, so is it, it, it didn't say, ah, thank you, Jesus. No, you have to understand that pride to God is if we are to rate if we are to rate sins, eh, pride is is probably number one. The Bible says six things God hates, yet seven are an abomination. What's the first? It says it was a pride. proud word. He even say a proud speech, a proud word, a proud look, a proud look. And so you have some, uh, even Celestial Church of Christ, I'm sorry to pick on some prof uh, in the prophet line, but you have some people, they wear four corners with their blue loin. Mm -hmm. Enter. Mm -hmm. uh, look at it with proud look. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I, uh, you know what? There are shepherds that do. So it's not, I'm not, there are people in the evangelic line that do the same thing. Mm -hmm. it, oh yeah, I'm sure only Buddhists too. They do it. You know, make us, we've seen you, people have seen you maybe on TV or people have seen you on social media. Everybody knows you, now bounce. Or you're even choir members, you're a singer. Everybody now, be, God knows a proud speech. It says a proud look. And for that reason, God annihilated him he immediately. Immediate effect was carried out. We have to be very careful because for us as believers, See, every day we must pray to God, please strip away, strip, strip away, kill all the, the spirit of pride in me. Because they remain pride, even as we are, we are all here assembled, there's pride in me, there's pride in you, there's still pride in us that God still needs to, the, the spirit still needs to kill. Still needs to kill. <clears throat> and God resists the proud, is what the Bible says. He resists the proud. You can you cannot enter into the kingdom of God a prideful soul. No, 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 no. You are not needed there. Humility, humility, humility. Iteriba, ijo mimo, iteriba, ijo mimo, eshododo, eijo mimo. That's the way God is. A humble heart. That puts God first. A humble heart that's ready to kneel down, bow to God. I was watching one show where it was husband and wife. They were talking. Uh, or, or no, I think they are, they are, they are engaged. And, uh, you know, the, the husband has said something to her. And then she said, I think I think it was teasing her about, you know, kneeling, kneeling down for him. And she said, you know, I love you. I love you with all my heart. I love you from Mars to back or whatever, however she put it. But I will never kneel for any man. And I said, that right there is the issue with the entire world. That's why, and that's just even within marriage, right? Right there. That she cannot even conceive kneeling for her husband. And I'm just even talking within marriage. Notice that now to say a woman, should, a wife should kneel for her husband. It seems like a radical statement now. Mm -hmm. It seems very radical. Mm -hmm. Even we must be careful to say it.
But we remember in our culture many years ago, it wasn't that way. It was understood. So if you cannot kneel for the one, the husband you claim to love that you see, then when it comes to God, and then look at Celeste, you too, you can notice why our the churches that appeal to most people are the ones that they don't do what? They don't kneel. Because why? What is it that kneeling symbolizes? Submission. Submission. It is the it is a humiliating act. Mm -hmm. Kneeling is is what humility means. That's what's the symbol, and we cannot carry it out. I will never kneel. I won't kneel because to kneel means you surrender. It means that it is humility. And so when we come on Sundays, you have some people, you know, some of them can't kneel down even nowadays. You know, young guys, young women just. It's a, it's, a, it's a struggle to kneel. And so they'll go to a church that's more amenable. We stand, we'll begin to debate. Uh, God does not need us to kneel. Those are old ways. We don't need to do, okay. If that's the, if that's the way you want to rationalize it, no problem. But you have to understand that the symbolic acts have their place. That's the, the, the symbol, symbolic line is the way the Lord communicates. Parables. And we must fulfill it. Right? Um, so the Lord kills Herod, and then what happens? 24 and 25. 24, but the word of the of of God. The word of God it grew blew. and multiplied. And you see. And Barnabas and Saul returned, returned from Jerusalem, Jerusalem and they had filled their ministry, ministry and, and took with, with them John, whose son was, was Mark. Mark. And so again, you see the word of God. That's what Herod, Herod will have prevented had he, had he killed Peter, right? Trying to snuff out. But the work of God cannot be hindered by, by any man. Whether you're a king, you're an emperor, or whatever it is that anyone calls themselves, God is still God. God is the king of all kings, right? Um, the word of God, in spite of the terror, in spite of the persecution, the word grew and multiplied. And we start to see that Paul, uh, Saul and Barnabas, who is also Paul. Uh, contrary to popular belief, God did not change his name from, there is, it's not written anywhere that God changed his name from Saul to Paul. It just so happens that that's what they began to call call him at some point, refer to him more as Paul at some point, right? But his name was still Saul. Um, so, but the Lord uh, began to use him and Barnabas as they began to venture for Paul, uh, Saul and Barnabas. So Paul and Barnabas, they were the ones that started going out, mm. right? Beyond the borders, right? They took Mark with them and began to go out, spreading the gospel. That's why you start to see that moving further now, moving from henceforth now, you hear more about you start to you start to read more about Paul. You won't you won't read too much anymore about Peter. I, well, I mean, we'll still get back a bit, but you start to see more about the travels of Paul, the first journey of Paul, the first the second missionary journey of Paul, third missionary journey of Paul, till Paul becomes apprehended uh, and then towards his death. All right, so uh, we can land there. Uh, and for today, and we'll continue by God's grace, chapter 13, uh, next week. Time is 9.22 over here. Does anybody have any questions or anything to add? Yes. Um, I just want to say something about um, what we read in um, verse 15. And this, and this, this said unto her, thou art mad. Yes. But she constantly affirmed, affirmed. that. It was even so. It was true. And yeah. they even didn't, they didn't believe again. They said, oh, maybe it's, it's an, an angel. angel. Yeah. 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 So what I want to say there is that uh, many of us, we think we have faith. Faith is a very difficult thing to have, mm -hmm. except we ask from God. Yes. Because sometimes mm -hmm. we think we have faith, but we are battling between Hannah mm -hmm. and spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why. But to have faith, you ha the, the flesh has to die. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah. because I think what many of us, what um, the situation we are always in is what they were experiencing exactly. here yeah. as human, mm -hmm. because we are carnal. Mm -hmm. So we think God, well, even though we are praying, yeah. but we we think God will 
perform his miracle in our own way. Yeah. Maybe yeah. <laughs> do you understand? So exactly. I think that well what mm. always happened mm. um in Internally, our yeah. in our in our heart. But, yeah. So exactly. we are battling between you know, carnal and spiritual. Exactly. So but yeah. if you want to really have faith, mm -hmm. you have to be, you know, the flesh has to die. Yeah. You must not think about you. Oh, yeah. You know, like our five senses, we must not be walking. It has to die. Yeah, I, I like you, you hit you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly the experience. I think most of us can probably <laughs> we can probably attest to it. Even when we are in prayer, when we are coming together, and we are praying. It's it's a struggle. It's a struggle. It's mm -hmm. a fight. You know, well, you cannot understand when Jesus said, "If you even have faith as a as a mustard yeah. seed, if you can even conjure up that much faith." That's a mighty thing. That's why that man said, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Yeah, it's yeah. only God that can help us. Well said. That's that's a very, very, very good point. Anybody else wants to ask questions or maybe add to that or something that... Uh... Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah, sir. Yeah, it is Alaba. And yes, that sir. was exactly the question I was going to ask that mommy asked because I <laughs> jotted that verse 12 and verse 15. Mm. So, when according to what you said, like when people are praying, they were praying for Peter, right? Not to be killed in the prison. Yeah, most likely, so, yes. Then, what is the essence of praying without no faith? Mm. Because if you go to that, uh, if you read it all the way down, and in verse 15, he says it is his angel. What does that mean? Meaning that uh, probably he has died. He's dead mm. already. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> in our own Yoruba culture, we say, ah, yeah. so, and then his spirit now will go and be showing to everybody. Yeah. So that means, well, that means that uh, they don't have the faith because they were praying for Peter. And now when Peter was knocking at the door, why did they mention that oh maybe it might be his spirit meaning that um, they have concluded that probably he will not be able to get out of that place or is dead or they've killed him yes sir absolutely i i think i think you've you've already answered it that's exactly what it is they've already <laughs> yeah, okay. made that conclusion they've yes. made they, yeah they've made that conclusion already it's the same way you know, sometimes they might bring someone that's sick to the church and they say, oh, we should pray for the person that is sick, right? And maybe the person has, you know, some maybe cancer and we say, let's pray. And in our minds, we're we are probably thinking that, well, let's just pray because it's what we're supposed to do. But this person is already a goner, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But, and that's the thing, it's, 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 it's an act of faithlessness. Let's, 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 let's be truthful. It's an act of faithlessness. Right. Um, faith is again. The Bible says, "Is the substance of things hoped for, is the evidence of things not seen." Now, um, I think many uh, to be to to sort of be fair to to ourselves is that I wouldn't say that many of us we we pray within the first half of that statement, the substance of things hoped for. Mm. I think most of us can at least say that we are at least maybe hitting that target. At least. In the sense that we are praying that God, please, we hope this person will be healed. We hope that this person, uh, uh, will the door will be open. But then the other part of actually conceiving that, or conceiving that God can actually do this, that it's not hard for God to do, you know, and this can happen, right? Or even the next step, this will happen, right? That. That can that can be that's a that's a challenge to uh, that's a challenge to us. But we can talk about this in many in many dimensions too. Um, you know, God can even reveal that okay, this person you are, you are praying for maybe to have children. This person will not have children, right? That's also faith. God has already revealed to you that that's what it is, and this person will not have faith. But then some, and then we say to ourselves, no, that cannot be God. That's, that's some evil spirit that said that. This person, we have children because God has said we'll be fruitful and we will multiply, right? So it can work also in that way where even God has revealed what will happen, but it's not the answer we want. And then we, you know, uh, we can, we can, we believe that we can uh, 
uh, adjust adjust it. Um, but yeah, the, the the answer to your question sir, is that they were we see an act of faithlessness here. They did not really believe that um, Peter had been set free, that their prayers actually were answered. It's an act of faithlessness. But we are not to judge them. What does it show us? It reflects exactly what happens with us too as well. And it's, a te it's something that teaches us as believers that we need to continue to ask God to help us to be more faithful, to ask for faith, to increase and help our faith, just like our mother has said. Right? And only the only God can really tighten up our faith. So, uh, yeah, great, great question, sir. Excellent question, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Does anybody, if you have, if anyone else has something to add, Hallelujah, to Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Yeah, this is Gonzalez. Um, I thank God for His Spirit and for His uh, presence in our midst. Um, I just want to pinch in a little bit. Everybody, whatever we say, everything makes sense. But what I, uh, I would say, and then the Holy Spirit will uh, reveal to everyone if it's true, because we know for sure that the promise also uh, of Jesus Christ to us is that the Spirit will show us and tell us more in life. So a prayer, prayer sometimes uh, does not have to be for us to uh, receive something from God. Not all the time. Prayer sometimes is like a communion. And then uh, just, uh, you know, like a talk and chat with your, your, it's exactly like you go visit your dad and then you talk with him, you, 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 you go over a lot of things. It's not necessary for you to truly get something from him. That relationship, number one. So when Jesus was saying, pray, pray at all times without season. It's not for us to get away from trouble or anything. Sometimes it doesn't happen in this scenario, uh, which we treated tonight. But uh, there are times where uh, uh, we are not going to see the result at all. But mm -hmm. the, the importance of that uh, prayer is more than what we can imagine. What is it? is just for us to remain in that faith. Okay, somebody is sick and we know that the person has cancer. And then we go, we continue praying with the person, telling the person, you know, just to hope he's going to be well. And if truly we do well and the person also does well, do you know what it is? The person will remain in that faith until he, he or her expires is a great gain. And that's why John was saying the revelation, blessed are those who die. Right? June is a great soul. <laughs> Not everybody can, uh, can, can, can face a challenge and still believe in. So mm -hmm. is, it, 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 I don't know how I can put it to you guys, but I'm pretty sure you get what I'm trying to highlight there. Like a prayer <laughs> is more than what we can think of. Sometimes it's for us to remain in that faith without even seeing any result at all. And as we check out from that body in that state, we are present before the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. No very, problem. very well said. Very, very well said. Uh, prayer, I love the way our Father and the Lord says it. Prayer is beyond just, oh, Lord, uh, do this and do that for me. It's a tool of intimacy with God, communing with God, trying to, you know, wanting to know, God, what, what is your will? Show me your ways. Mm. Um, show me what you desire. How can I please you more? Those types, I think those types of prayers, if we had more of those rather than request prayers, mm. uh, I be, I, this, uh, you know, it's usually what pervades our our, our gatherings, always seeking and asking. 
But we go back to, I actually believe as our father and the Lord said that there's more faith in those prayers when it's just about communion, communion mm -hmm. desiring just to know God and, and he, waiting to just hear from God. But well said, uh, please uh, keep adding, keep adding. I, I'm loving it. Yes, ma'am. Um, I thank God for this act of apostle because I believe we, we need to be reading it all the time. Mm -hmm. Why? Because many of us, especially the so-called men of God, they are into the world. Mm -hmm. They are not like these apostles. So this act of apostle should be reminding us of how we should be working with God. Right. Many of these so-called men of God, even we that we are members of disciple or, 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 or whatsoever we call our Christians, yes. we are so much in, into the world that why I'm saying this is that we see many shepherds, they will say there are too many programs, unnecessary programs that we are doing that does not edify our soul. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still bringing us into the world. You will see music, uh, jamboree, mm -hmm. all these things, all these programs. We didn't see an example of them in the Bible. Or saying, oh, I'm going to celebrate my, my church is 25 years old. My church is uh, 10 years old. Who cares? Does, does that um, edify the, the body of Christ? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So the apostles were here busy. They were busy praying all the time, preaching the word of God for people to be saved. Right. That is the way I see that many of our men of God nowadays, they are just wasting their time. Because they are more into the into the world, carnality is taking over the church instead of ministry of God. Do you understand the word of God yeah. going on and on and on? Yeah. Like in the in the in the in the time of the apostles, we don't see it anymore. So that's why we cannot see, even see angels. Mm -hmm. Like they descend, you know, they see them. They know the difference between vision and seeing them. Yeah. Um, so, but now we don't even see angel. We don't see anything anymore <laughs> because we are more into world, the world. Carnality is taking place. That's a that's a very very bold statement and 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 radical statement. But it shouldn't be that radical to us because it is what we are seeing. This is is what we are seeing. Um, but I don't want to talk to more. anyone else. Let, let's let's keep it going. I want to give a platform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, one of the, if you look um the apostolic times, the zeal for Christianity is not like that for today. <laughs> you know, if you look at the trend of Christian, it has even become more trendy because mm. uh, that was why Paul was uh, warning the Romans in chapter 12 <laughs> that uh, verse 1 that they should not be conformed mm. to this world. The world. You see, if uh, one of the things is that if you look at our religion, Christianity, uh, one of the things that that we we'll dread a lot, you see us is about when we get, when we are about death, mm -hmm. the next prayer will be we we'll be praying. God reverse it. Uh, God reverse it. Well, rebuke, 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 die, yeah. cast, dying. You'll be having all sorts of prayers going on. You see? And you will see that in actual fact, it, we are different from those people, like perpetual, the people that when they brought them to the Colosseum to be fed by the lions, they were still singing yeah. songs. Mm -hmm. As if they are even ready to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. They don't care. With their children, they were there, and they, they are going to be devoured, but except they renounced their faith, mm -hmm. and they never did. But if where was it so faulty? You see, the, uh, our religion started to lose greed as the world modernizes. If you look at the Islamic religion, from the age of six, I went to the Quran Quranic school. From that age, the first thing you are taught is not to be worried about that. That that is it's even it's something we should even wish for. 
that even if you die because of this word, I mean about the Quran, believe you me, you are going to you are going to paradise. It's been it's still been there. You see, the last thing which we don't talk about, which we are which is supposed to be the basis of our of our, of our preaching, the kingdom of heaven. Instead of us talking about the kingdom of God, this is what we are preaching today, you know. They, they make it their first priority. That is why you see them, they can put bomb on themselves and die. They don't care. Move to the other religion, Hindu, uh, Buddha. You, that has nothing to do with them. Even they, they even they are even ready to commit a rakiri, you know, that is a suicide before, but now coming back to us. I'll give some example. Let's assume now we get a prophecy. I remember one year in the in the early in the early years of the church of our parish here. This is our parish here. Uh, just, uh, around Christmas, I, I, I just discovered that people were not coming to church throughout. I never knew what what was going on. The church was still in the house. Where we are, we're still praying in the house at that time. I just saw people were not coming. So mm. until we until the cross overnight. So ah, uh, what was going on? It was there somebody there. Uh, the uh, shepherd didn't you hear? I said no. What happened? They said there was a prophet that came and told them that people are going to die in the church. That mm. is in our parish. Okay. Because they the prophet gave them a message that somebody is so going to die in church, everybody they disappear. <laughs> Can you see what the apostles were doing? They, they, this has not this is, all of us are called. Rhoda was a woman, she's part of those people praying. Mm -hmm. So it has nothing. You see, we all have a role to play. You see, the early Christians they see this as a collaboration. It's not that even though they see Peter there. But they too, they want to play their own part. Mm -hmm. Now, it was after then they said, ah, so if because somebody is going to die, that's why all of you ran away. Mm -hmm. What are we supposed to do? I didn't get to know about this till January 1st. Mm -hmm. This is how fear affects us yeah. as Christians. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that there was another time somebody died, we lost somebody. And I just started to get my, my, my messages. Uh, more people are still going to die. And people started to shiver. You see, this mental poisoning is never from God. There's a way we Christianity, we really need to go back on track. Because we have heard, we have seen the acts of the apostles. That even while, while Stephen was being stoned, in the prayer he was praying has nothing to do with the people stoning him. Right. If we put ourselves today the way we have been indoctrinated and they are stoning us, the prayer that we pray that God kill all of them, turn their family, blind them. I know I'm going to die, but their generation, mm -hmm. let them be crippled, mm -hmm. let them be still bad. Still bad. These are the problems that we have as Christians. Yes, we could, even though we are in the church, but anything, if anything negative happened, you will see that people will run away. And finally, the last one, but funny. Uh, we had a service one Wednesday. So I saw one of the members then, he, he went to, he just, she just jumped the light. And the cop pulled her, pulled her up and wrote a ticket. Mm -hmm. And then she drove back to the, ah, I said, you came back? She said, yes. He said, Shepard, do I know what happened? Ah, they just gave me a ticket. I said, ah, what did you do? Uh, she, she jumped the law. I said, you broke the law. <laughs> ah. He said, but this money is too much. And I just left the church right now. Now, and I knew the point she's trying to leave. I said, you know what? Hold on a minute. Mm -hmm. I went inside my room. Mm -hmm. I, and I handed uh, my own ticket too. <laughs> as the shepherd. Uh, listen, I, I, <laughs> I was trying to, to make it to work on time. I went through the couple lane. Yeah. Can you see the ticket I got? Yeah. Then that was how she was able to calm down. So it, the problem is that when anything is does not go according to the way we plan, plan we yeah, feel yeah. that prayers are not being answered yeah. and nothing is happening. 
this is the mindset that many of us, we feel that we come to church and that uh, the reason why we're in the church is just for us that we should just enjoy this world mm -hmm. as if in, in joy, happiness, and whatever. Yeah. And we, we must not go through any form of tribulation. And this is the mindset why many of the of, of us today, that is why we are called Christ. We call ourselves Christian. If anything, anything negative happened, I rebuke, I reject, I cast, I bind, I throw. All these prayers are not from God. May God bless us. Amen. Mm. Excellent. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Does anyone else have anything to add? Any questions before we close it out for the evening? Um, okay, if nothing, um, I'll, I'll end on this note. You know, I remember, at least based on what our Father and the Lord has, has, has said, you know, uh, I think the, the, the example he was making of Islam teaching their children, I think the example there is to illustrate to us that we also have to have that tradition, especially inculcated into the lives of our children. Um, and I often remember whenever we recite the creed before the preaching, right, when we get to this part that says uh uh, I believe, you know, I believe in the celestial. I believe in the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit the, the celestial Church of Christ, the communion, the communion of saints. Right? Is it the, the resurrection? The resurrection of the body and, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. These are not just mere words that we 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 recite. In fact, in Yoruba, what do we call the creed? We say it was Ijewo. Right, that's what we say. It is a, it's a declaration of our faith, the, the the article of faith. That's what the creed is, right? And it's sad that many of our children cannot recite the creed from top to bottom, right? It's not even the long Nicene Nicene creed. It has been it has been shortened, right? Believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. At the all, all the core beliefs of Christianity is in that creed, and many of our children, if you pull them. If, they all. They, if if you ever if you ever if you ever go to any of these youth events, as an example, if you ever uh, 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 opportunity enough to to visit any of our younger youth events, do an experiment. Pick one of them out and ask ask them to recite the creed from top to bottom. I guarantee, if you find maybe two or three. You know, I'm not talking about like 40, 50 year olds. I'm talking about like young youth. I'm talking about 15, 16, 17, 18, now even 20, 25, ask them, they can't recite the creed. And that's a problem. That's a very, very big problem, right? Uh, but something for us to think about. May the Almighty God continue to be with this church. Amen. 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 Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it Amen. was in the beginning, it's now, and never shall be. God without end. Amen. Let's all pray and thank God for another evening spent in the Word of God. And just thank God for... His for his word, the beauty of it, the 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 light and and many things, the understanding and the wisdom of his word. I pray that God will open our hearts and our minds even to more understanding that which we do not know. He will open our hearts and our minds to in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Uh let's also pray. I believe again the convention is coming, uh is coming soon, and that'll be next month. And pray that God will uh, will direct the event in Jesus name. Amen. Also, I just want us to pray, keep the bishop that was stabbed, um, that was stabbed today uh, in prayer. We are all brothers and sisters in the Lord. Um, and we never know when the enemy might strike uh, anyone that the enemy might use in this ministry, but let us pray for one another. So let's put the bishop in our prayer and many others also who are being persecuted for the sake of the gospel. Prayer altogether. Jesus Christ, 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, continue to abide with us. Amen. The Father, cause your face to shine on us. Amen. Continue to increase our anointing. Amen. As we dance and hunger for your word every day, Father. Make us a fountain for others to learn about your works. Amen. Father, bless your church. Amen. In Jesus' most holy name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 In Jesus' Amen. name. Seven hallelujahs to praise the Lord together. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. And see you next week by the grace of God. Mm -hmm.